What's up y'all, Rayshawn here, and today we have a treat for you because we have two very special guests to get this episode started. First up is Morgan Davis. She is our student wellness coordinator and she oversees Jag Lives Well, which is a holistic wellness initiative here on campus. And just to kick things off, no pun intended, we have Brian Waller, who is our inter intramural sports coordinator, who's also going to get us a little bit excited to make some healthy habits in 2024. But that's not all. We also have a friend of the show, Dr. Wendy Habegger, who's going to talk to us a little bit about making some good money habits in 2024, because I know that I need to spend my money better. So this is going to be a personal conversation for me, just like I'm sure it will be for you. So stay tuned and get in the wild with us. All right, well, welcome y'all to In the Wild. Thank you for being here today. Um, getting us started, Morgan, could you share some insights about your role and how does that kind of contribute to overall student life here at the university? Yeah, so my role is student wellness coordinator, and so a lot of what my job is to do is to try and promote all the services and resources available to students that support their holistic well-being. So we have our holistic wellness initiative called Jags Live Well, where we have eight dimensions of wellness that we see as humans living within to be just holistically well and striving individuals. And so I'm just here to kind of try and provide some tips and tricks in hopes that our students can, you know, learn to live well while they're here with us. So... In promoting that, because all you just mentioned, you were looking to take care of the entire student, like holistically, like how do you approach that with all the different types of wellness? Because you have mental, physical, but also financial. Like, how do you, how do you pro approach uh, prioritizing which ones? And yeah, that's a good question. It comes down to kind of just really. Sometimes what's going on during the month, you know, during like financial literacy month, we will focus a little bit more on financial well-being or even, you know, near the holidays, we'll talk about how to give gifts on a low budget. Um, you know, we'll even touch on kind of in the in the colder months that we're in, you know, that we're kind of in right now is how to kind of deal with seasonal affective disorder, just the change in weather um, when it does get darker earlier and things like that. So we just kind of put out as many just ideas that we can find, depending on what's going on just kind of in the world, um, what's being recognized during the month or during the week or anything along those lines is kind of how we like figure out what to prioritize. And for you, Brian, you're in intramural sport, so that kind of helps with the, I guess, physical part a little bit. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your role kind of contributes to student life as well? Yeah, so under intramurals kind of fall under the campus rec umbrella. But it's really just to get students involved and to develop a sense of community uh, in playing sports, uh, whether that's basketball, flag football, anything like that. They're playing for, you know, bragging rights with their fellow student. And it's the way I describe it is like it's a sports league within the university. We're not going to play different universities or anything like that. I mean, it's for bragging rights for the most part, a $10 T-shirt and then... <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollar T-shirt, exactly, and then we have a trophy that we've created for them to to hold up and take pictures of, and it stays at the the rec center. Oh, nice. Uh, what sports are most popular right now for our students? So uh, we try and keep a good rotation going, whether it was for fall or spring. Uh, this spring we're doing. Uh, we'll start with fly, five on five uh, basketball, uh, soccer and kickball, and then we roll into uh, four on four flag football, volleyball, and ultimate frisbee. And then we'll have some random tournaments throughout the year, whether that's dodgeball, table tennis, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, and just a variety of things. Uh, and going back to you, Morgan, what have been some special initiatives that you've been able to work on this past year that really makes you proud? Well, we had our second wellness week um, in October last semester, and so that's kind of something that I've brought in um, during my time here, and it's just a week full of events, just touching on pretty much everything within well-being. Um, but one thing that we have focused more closely on these past two years is um, National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. It's just something that my students kind of really have a high passion for, and so they were like, hey, can we make sure that we recognize this time? I said, absolutely. You know, if they want to run in with it, we'll run with it. Um, and then also with Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is which is in April. So just partnering with, we have about nine to 12 campus partners that come to our events, and we just try and hit as many students as we can to raise awareness about the topic and, um, you know, provide resources for those that may need it. So what would be the best way, like if I was a student interested in learning more, what would be the best way to contact you or if I had an idea for something? 
Yeah, it's a good idea. We have our Instagram. Um, I help run that. And so we have DMs that are open if you ever want to reach out. Um, I do have a lot of students that just email me or when they do come by our tabling events, they're like, hey, you know, I would love for you to come present for a student organization that I help run. Or have you all ever thought about, you know, doing a topic about, you know, X, Y, Z. And so um, I'm pretty reachable, I would say, I think. Um, and then for students that just want to learn more about holistic wellness, we have our website. It's just search Jags Live Well in the Augusta University website. Um, and we have all the offices within the different dimensions of wellness that are located on campus so that you can see, you know, if I need help with my occupational wellness, okay, who do I need to go talk to about that? Um, and so we have all those things lined up in that website. It really is kind of a one-stop shop for students not only to learn more about the different dimensions of wellness, but learn how they can get some help with it within those two. And similar question to you, Brian, what would you say is the best way for students to say like, hey, this word's not being offered, but me and some friends want to start it. Like, how do we go about doing yeah, that? Yeah, so we, we normally will take some suggestions throughout the year. We get them every semester. <laughs> Um, anything from we want to do spike ball or cornhole to pickleball and we've we try to take that into consideration we we obvi obviously aren't gonna one person says that we're gonna we're gonna go you know full on and do a league but if if that request keeps coming up we'll we'll talk with our you know my grad assistant my student staff and say hey do we really think this is a, in you know are we gonna get the response that we want and we'll we'll try to make it at least a tournament at first, and then see if it could develop into a um, a league. A good example: last spring, so spring twenty three, we did a pickleball tournament and had thirty eight teams sign up. Oh wow! Like that, and then we so we're like, okay, we have the the want. Let's see, let's make it into a a season. And so we did that this fall, and it, it went really well. That's awesome. Has there been a sport that you've been wanting to bring forward that you haven't had the chance yet <laughs> so one that is a lot of gets a lot of popularity is softball but the problem is we don't have really the field space for that uh, we've partnered with uh, Warren Baptist in the past and done a softball tournament there we were trying to do one this fall but it just didn't work out just because of timing with with our schedule and their schedule uh, we have Another one that's kind of been, we started this year, was a golf tournament. We oh, cool. did one over the summer, and we did one in the just this fall. We want to do one in the spring, but something about a small golf tournament that happens in Augusta every year mm, that yeah. kind of ruins things for <laughs> us. But yeah, uh, it's it's just hard to get a to find a course to partner with. Obviously, we partner with uh, Forest Hills just because that's our, our home course. But spring's a lot more difficult with, with golf. So we're kind of pushing back to hopefully um, next summer again. Okay. Um, how do you find that balance between making it fun and, like, inclusive for everyone to join, but also, like, competitive to where people really want to bring their A game, so to speak? Yeah, uh, that's a... A fine line, <laughs> uh, because there are people who go out there who want to just have fun, and you can tell those teams because they don't care if they win, they don't care if they lose, they laugh at each other, they're having fun, and then there are people who take it very seriously and who want to to win their ten dollar t shirt and have one for each semester that they're here. Uh, it's hard. It's hard sometimes because you know we have to. That's kind of what we rein, rein them in with is like guys. You're playing for a t-shirt. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> if you need a t-shirt or want a t-shirt that badly, just come talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd rather I'd rather just give you the t-shirt opposed to you getting all frustrated and upset and ca possibly causing more issues out on the field. Uh, but it's it takes, you know, with my officials, we try and make sure that we rein them in and calm them down, guys. We, we talk it, about it in the beginning of each game in our captain's meetings is, you know, hey, sportsmanship, that factors into your record. So let's let's make sure we, you know, keep we tone it down. We keep it, our emotions in check. And I get it. It's hard. Everybody gets frustrated. Everybody gets uh, intense when it comes to sports. That's just definitely a way of life in the South, I think. For sure. Uh, question for both of you guys. What is your favorite personal favorite wellness activity and how do you kind of incorporate that into your work-life balance 
I mean, <laughs> I have bias as a certified personal trainer, so I like to go to the gym. That's kind of my um, my go-to, I would say. But I also have, in the past few months, started to implement some meditation practice. Oh, nice. And I've really been enjoying it, just kind of um, a different way to tap into whether helping manage with stress or some anxiety. Um, and it's been difficult at first because you have to kind of train your brain um, to be present and be mindful, but it's just like how we exercise our bodies. You got to exercise your brain too. Uh, I think for me, uh, I've, I think I'm past my playing days. <laughs> I'm officially past those in a couple months or I guess in a month now I'll be 40. So I'm, I'm past those days. <laughs> However, I've actually started officiating high school football now. Oh, cool. Um, because of my role here teaching students how to officiate, I've kind of branched out and started doing high school football. I've been doing uh, girls uh, flag football, which has become a sport in Georgia now. So I've been doing a lot more of that, which is kind of fun because I can see there's a way that I can pull some of my students who officiate and who are actually really good at officiating. I could potentially pull them to that next level if they want to go to that next level. Uh, so it's a way for me to stay around it and stay, you know, somewhat physically active, but I'm past my prime. I'm, I'm accepting that now. I mean, look, you're still out there in your own way, which I think is really cool. Um, do you ever get the opportunities to, help advise students on like I guess the academic side because they're probably I imagine they come to you and sometimes they're very stressed out about something going on on the academic side of things like how do you kind of guide them in helping them out in your respective areas I would say for me if we're at a tabling event you know nine times out of the ten especially when we are in the busier times of the semesters like around um, midterms or finals you know anytime you ask a student how are things going they're usually going to it's busy. I'm stressed. They're going to let you know. Um, and so one thing that I always kind of try and tell students is that try and take, take time to take care of yourself. Um, as someone who was in undergrad, you know, not too many years ago, um, I think that one thing I've realized now is that I put a lot of pressure on myself for reasons that maybe I didn't need to. Um, and even though it was super important work that I was doing at the time, um, you know, Looking back on it now, I don't remember those sleepless nights or anything like that, but I do remember the other memories that I was able to create. Um, and so I try and remind students about that and then also just point them to the things that we do have on campus. We have our academic success center, you know, going and taking advantage of the resources that are available for free, because then oh, yeah. once you get out of there, you're going to have to start paying for some of the things that uh, you do have available to you as a student. So I just try and point them to the people that are the experts on campus um, and just kind of work as... A liaison, I guess you could say. Yeah, because once you step out of this campus, you have to pay for everything. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> everything costs money. What about yeah. you, Ryan? I would echo that. Uh, just the idea of making sure that people are taking a, a advantage of those, those things that we offer here, like the Academic Success Center, connecting people, uh, being, on, being on campus for almost 10 years now, like trying to connect people to the right people. Um, but with the student side of things, you know, I'm, I'm working directly with my student staff. There are times where I can, you know, hey, how are you doing? And they, you get that busy, stressed, what's going on? Is it classwork? Is it life work? <laughs> is it, <laughs> yeah. What is it? You know, and you know, a lot of times it is that school work. And I try to, to remain flexible as a supervisor saying, your job here is to get an education. Working on campus, yeah, that's a benefit, but your first priority is to be a student and to get an education. So if you need to take a step back, let me know. We, we, can, we can make it work. Um, I have a couple students who, who will do that. Come around midterm, it's like, hey, I got two projects these next two weeks. Are you okay with me taking off? Absolutely. Because I want them to be able to succeed not only you know, in the classroom, but outside of the classroom so that they, if they don't take that time to do that schoolwork or to get it done, it's just gonna build up and build up and add more pressure to them to where I could potentially lose them as a staff member mm. and from, you know, academic probation, suspension, down the line, you yeah. know. So it's just trying to make sure they, get, they know the resources that we have to offer here. 
Do y'all have any success stories that come to mind when you think of students who engaged in intramural sports or participated in something that Jags Live Well offered that really like just impacted them positively and just really makes you smile, I guess? I've gotten a lot of feedback um, from students that uh, use the Headspace app. You know, mm. students have access to Headspace. It's a mindfulness and meditation app. And, um, you know, by being a student at AU, students can get it for free. And um, I've had a, several students come up to tabling events and they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for, you know, letting me know about the Headspace app. I use it all the time. It's really helped with, you know, my sleep, my anxiety, my stress, anything along those lines. So we've had a lot of success with that. Um, I think if I'm thinking of a particular story, I have peer educators that are on staff with me. And so one of my students, she's been with me for over two years now, and since she was a freshman here. And so um, just seeing her grow over the years and really start to implement some of the topics that we talk about at our different events, um, you know, she's expressed how helpful it's been and I can actually, you know, physically see it as well too. I don't have a specific example of somebody, but I have a, there's a, few, a group, I would say, of dental and med and PT students who will consistently play in every sport that we have to offer oh, wow. because it's a way for them to, to just a, a release uh, to where, hey, I get, the, I get the compliments of, hey, thanks for doing this, or we, we really needed it this week, or we have an exam, thanks for doing this, so that we can you know, kind of release some stress. And there's a few that, you know, religiously almost, it's like, hey, we got flag football, we got volleyball. Next part, we're going to do basketball and soccer. I'm not very really good at either one of those, but I'm going to do them. And it's, it's just so that they can, they just have that stress relief because they're, whether they consider themselves gym rats and they're always in the gym or they're, they just want to stay active and have that stress relief. I think it, benefits them in a long run because you can tell a difference that they and they're 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 doing well in school as you know as well but they just want to be able to have that release how does it feel when y'all see those students kind of just coming to their own and taking care of themselves in that way i think it i mean our why of course is our students um all of our students that we have and i think you know when we do get praised like that and they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And you're like, this is my job. This is why I'm here, yeah. you know? And I think that what we've heard a lot with, especially students that maybe are nervous to utilize our counseling center or go to student health or testing and disability services, you know, we'll hear like, well, I don't want to bother them. Like I've already been a couple times this semester and we're like, no, like that's why we're here. We are here because we want you to come utilize our services. And so, yes, we do. It is nice to hear thanks and understand that the work that we're doing does have an impact, but um, you know, that's what we're here for. That's that's why we have our jobs. Yeah, I was really jealous of students. And I don't get jealous often of, like, hearing that they get headspace or uh, for free. Because I was like, where was this when I was a student? <laughs> but switching gears a little bit, I have a fun little game that I wanted to play with y'all before I let you go. Of Would You Rather. So I have some fun, or not so fun, more wellness-based uh, questions that I want to see which one you would prefer. So first up, would you rather have daily meditation or daily yoga for your overall well-being? I won't go meditation. Okay. I'd probably, <laughs> I'd move some yoga poses. I might not do so well. So I'm going to go meditation. No downward dog or anything? No like downward that. dog. <laughs> Cat back. Anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd probably go yoga, I think. Okay. Um, because... I need to work on my mobility a little bit more, so I might not look pretty either, but <laughs> it needs to happen. <laughs> uh, would you rather participate in a competitive intramural sports league with a chance to win a championship or join a more recreational league for the pure enjoyment of playing? Oh, mine's going to be competitive. Yeah. I gotcha. want to win. I think I might go same. Um, I played intramurals a lot when I was an undergrad, and I was very competitive, and now I do even an adult sports league here, and I just can't. Oh, nice. I can't flip that switch off of the competitive piece for some reason. Because right. so gonna... if you're not first, you're last. Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're an athlete, especially, um, I would probably have to play uh, for fun because I'm not that athletic. Um, but at least I would be doing something that I enjoy. Next up, would you rather encourage students to prioritize in getting a good night's sleep or... Encourage them to stay hydrated throughout the day for improved focus and energy. 
Why are you gonna do me like that on yeah. this one? <laughs> you pick one, I'll pick the other. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm gonna go sleep because sleep is super important, and I think that that's probably an area that um, we do see a lot of lack in, and uh, just how much it can impact everything else around us is. Uh, it's really, it can be detrimental if you're not getting it appropriately, but if you are getting enough, it can be really beneficial, so. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to agree <laughs> with sleep. I understand both are important, but uh, I think I can look back at myself when I was a student. Like, I didn't get much sleep. I feel like I still don't get much sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't get enough sleep. There's not enough hours in the day to do what all I need to do. And and I think with students, they're, they probably have less because they're staying up later and I joke with my students, I'm like, don't text me after or call me after this time because I'm asleep. Yeah. Um, if you don't want that 545 text from me, don't text me. <laughs> so I think they all probably need more sleep. Well, this one would be fun. Uh, would you rather promote a campus-wide healthy cooking challenge or a step challenge for physical activity? Hmm. I'm going cooking. I was going to go cooking also. Because <laughs> uh, we might be able to find some good food and yeah. make sure we get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, yeah. Think it's, I think it's a skill that uh, it's important to start learning at a younger age um, and just kind of implementing some good habits with it too. Last one. Would you rather students practice mindfulness through nature walks or indoor meditation for stress relief? There's a lot of studies coming out right now about the importance of being outside um, and the benefits that sunlight at specific times of the day can bring us. So I'm going to go with the nature one, but since we are in these colder months, the inside mm. meditation will be all right too. No, nah, I'm still going outside. You're still going <laughs> I, outside? I just don't think there's enough. I think students now, they're, a lot of students stay inside a lot more. There's not much as much outdoor activity. I mean, I can just look in my neighborhood and see and there's not as many kids out playing in the yard like out. But then again, I don't understand why my my parents just let me go sometimes. I was like, That's, <laughs> that doesn't seem safe <laughs> now looking back. But uh, yeah, I think more outdoor activities. Uh, any final thoughts for students to kind of create some more healthy habits as we mosey on in 2024? I think just, you know, utilize what is around you and find the support systems that are going to be able to help you grow into the best version of yourself and what's going to just feel best and work for you because what works for one person isn't going to work for the next person and whatnot. It's not a one size fits all approach. So just kind of find your thing and stick with it and stay consistent. Yeah. I would just echo that, but also don't be afraid to ask, like if you, mm -hmm. if you need help or if you need to be connected to someone on campus, don't be afraid to ask somebody like a professor or a professional staff that, you know, uh, I tell my students all the time, like I have an open door. You're more than welcome to come in there anytime you need to. If you have questions about anything, we'll talk about it. I'll get you connected. If I don't know them, I probably know somebody that does. So it's just to find the ways to stay connected on campus. Well, thanks, y'all. I am very excited for 2024. And I hope all the students that are watching this, listening to this, can take something that y'all have said and put it to good use. Yeah, awesome. Right. Thanks for having us. Hello Jaguars, my name is Dr. Sharon Dukes and I'm the Director of Student Life and Engagement at Augusta University. The Office of Student Life and Engagement is located on the Somerville campus in the Jaguar Student Activity Center, better known as the JSAC. Our office has six areas, civic engagement, student leadership, student organizations, campus activities, the overall JSAC facilities, and fraternity and sorority life. Our mission is to create connected communities that offer transformative experiences and memorable moments for the students of Augusta University. We offer several activities such as spring fling, we host the Miss Augusta University pageant, we offer opportunities for student leaders, and we have three councils for fraternity and sorority life to include the College Panhellenic Council, the Interfraternity Council, and the National Panhellenic Council. If you are interested in joining an organization or becoming engaged with our office, please visit us in the JSAC or go to our website at augusta.edu slash student life. Welcome, Dr. Wendy. Thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me. Um, just to start, for those who are unfamiliar with you, because I think you're awesome, um, could you share a little bit about your background in finance and just how you're so passionate about teaching students finance? Well, I uh, 
uh, my background is, believe it or not, I started back in the day at a little school called Augusta College where I got my bachelor's degree in mathematics. So my education started in the math field, I uh, got my master's degree in mathematics, but then decided I wanted a different PhD. I still wanted to stay in the quantitative field, but I just wanted something that paid a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I went and got my PhD in finance, and uh, so that that is how I fell into finance, so to speak. And uh, when I realized, you know, how much fun I had with the math of money, I just wanted to share that. And I had uh, uh, tutored while I was an undergrad, so I I kind of developed my love for teaching then. And so then when I got through with the PhD in finance, I'm like, well, let me just marry the two and do what I love and teach and teach the math of money. Because who doesn't like money? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so speaking of money, why do you think it's so crucial at this point in time for a lot of college students to develop strong literacy, financial literacy skills? Oh, it, this is... This is something, you know, I wish students, and I'm glad to see that a lot of the local schools are, uh, are, are uh, uh, taking the initiative and doing financial literacy courses younger and younger. They're providing it to their, you know, K through 12 uh, programs. Um, this is, but at the college is uh, stage is where students really start coming into their own and they are young adults and they are coming into adulthood. And if they don't have a good grasp on financial literacy, that is one of the, uh, the most important foundational building blocks that they can have so that they can start off on the right foot. You know, if they, they should be, you know, know their credit score just as quickly as they know their GPA and they should protect it just as vigorously as they do. And, and especially at this age, it's so important because they might make a choice, a bad choice or a bad decision that they don't realize is a bad choice or a bad decision. And it could impact them, you know, credit wise or financial wise. And it can have, you know, it can be detrimental. It can really carry with them. I mean, look how many, uh, speaking for myself, and I've been out for a while, <laughs> just a while, uh, but I'm still paying off student loans. And having, you know, when I left the PhD program, I had over $100,000 in debt. And uh, that's, you know, the automatic, a mortgage without a house to live in. Yeah. <laughs> so if they can minimize the, their, their costs and their debt, they'll just, you know, be that much, you know, further along in the future when they graduate. I agree a thousand percent uh, <laughs> to that. And what are some of the common mistakes or pitfalls that you see among college students? And what would you advise them to to avoid making those pitfalls? Um, a couple things. Um, I noticed that a lot of them don't seem to have financial situational awareness. And what I mean by that is, you know, everybody seems to understand the phrase situational awareness, you know, being aware of your environment and what's going on. But students don't really understand uh, their financial situation. How much do they spend on an average day? How much do they spend in a week? Uh, what are their monthly bills? Are they bringing in enough to cover that? Um, you know, are they keeping that in the forefront of their mind? Uh, oftentimes, money is, is one of the last things they want to worry about because their day is so full with classes and working and whatever else they have to do that it seems to something that gets pushed back and say, I'll think about it later, when really that should be the first thing that they do. Um, they, they should check their, their financial accounts, like if they have a checking account or a savings account, they should check them daily. You know, just once a day, every day, just to make sure everything's okay and the balance in there is what they expect it to be. Um, another mistake I see students make, uh, well, and I, and I don't want to call it a mistake, it's you're never, too, you're never too old or it's you're never too late to get started, is getting start, started with good credit. Mm. I have a good number of students who don't even have a credit card yet. And a lot of them believe in, uh, well, let, let me just go on a cash basis. And that's fantastic. If they can operate on a cash basis, that's wonderful. Um, but we are a credit-based society. And it's good to at least have their foot in the door, their foundation started on the right foot so that if they ever do need that line of credit, they've already been working towards building a, a good history so that they get offered the lower interest rates and not get hit with the higher interest rates because the financial institutions don't know how fantastic they are. So, so start it now, you know, get a credit card, be very responsible, 
charge something on it once a month, pay it off by the end of every month before the bill comes due, build that line of credit, build that that, that credit score, and before you know it, I mean, because that's one of the variables in the credit score formula is just longevity, stability of the, of, of, the mm -hmm. of an account. So that just comes with time. So the sooner they can get started on it, the sooner they're going to start accruing and, and get, having a good, you know, wait for that variable and they'll have great credit by the time they leave. Yeah. I remember fussing at my friend for quite a long time because she was so nervous about getting a credit card because she was like, I just don't trust myself or right. like you mentioned before, like, I don't need it. Like I make enough money to right. pay for what I need. Right. I don't need like, that's just going to be extra temptation that I don't need. And I'm like, right. no, like you said, the longer you have it, it's going right. to improve your credit score. So even if you just leave it in your purse and don't even think about it. Exactly. You know, just having it at least. And so. Yeah. A, a lot of people don't realize it actually adds to your net worth. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody is, is very conscious of the net worth calculation. Um, well, as long as you have that, that leeway, that cushion, that adds to your net worth. The only time it detracts is if you use too much of it. But if you use it responsibly, pay it off quickly, and don't accrue interest or carry interest, you'll be in great shape. And what would you recommend for students who may be working part-time or finding opportunities that might get them a stipend or not necessarily a full-time paycheck, mm -hmm. like how to budget and just manage their money with a very limited income? Oh, that there, there's a lot of things that they can do. They just have to be creative and willing to willing to try, willing to do. Um, I know when I was a student, uh, I used to <laughs> way back in the day. But I mean, it's, it's still <laughs> depending on the courses, you know, because I know a lot of courses now ha we have our materials online. If the the materials are not uh, um, online, if you still have a, a, a class that uses a traditional hard copy textbook check it out from the library and and just renew it uh, you know go through the renewal cyclings as you need to i i did that several times and had my textbooks for every semester free for a while except you know had to pay for the ones that maybe were not in the stacks but if they're in the stacks there's free textbooks um or borrow them from from a classmate who already had the class um, another thing that they can do is uh, we off in fact we offer uh, you know a lot of uh Opportunities to feed students. <laughs> I know the the College of Business. We love having cookouts and inviting. And you don't have to be a business student to come over and partake. Okay, um, that's good to you, know. You, oh yeah, we, we invite any anybody who looks hungry that happens to be in a in, in a close vicinity. Come on over and have some food. Um, another resource that AU has that a lot of students may not be aware of is the Open Pause Pantry. Um, there is, I advertise it in my courses, and I tell students there is no shame. You know, food insecurity is a serious problem. Yeah. And I'm glad to see AU being one of the first schools in the area to step up to that. And um, we in the whole College of Business, we have we have filled the pantry many a times. You know, we as faculty, we, we donate because we want to make sure our students are fed. And so if things happen or you're a little short, go make use of the food. That's what it's there for. And, but there's there's always opportunity. Students should always carry around their JAG card. Oh, yeah. And it should always be updated. because <laughs> And always ask for a student discount. There's no shame in that. A lot of places around in the local area give student discounts, but they don't know if you're a student Definitely. unless you say something. So, so, you know, ask for that student discount. <laughs> so if you're watching this, just know we're doing something on Jack Perks coming soon. <laughs> so you'll learn a lot more about all the discounts you can get around the CSRA. <laughs> just shameless plug right there. <laughs> but, that, awesome. but, that's, but that's a great point. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a lot of discounts offered to just folks who are part of the AU community. Exactly. Um, and switching gears to a little bit of a, I guess... Sometimes people look at it as a dark cloud, student loans, right? Um, because that's a, a big reality for a lot of our students right. in some capacity having to take out a little or a lot to, you know, fund their education. Right. Um, what advice do you have for students to help manage that debt responsibly? The um, well, uh, oftentimes students may not be in a in a position where they can make payments or begin making payments on their student loans while they're in school. Um, if they can't, that's fine. That's what the loan deferral is for, uh, for when they get out. But when they do get out, they, they need to really 
think during that 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 period where they have that six months wait where, before they have to start making payments, they should really consider the job that they're going into, what it's paying, because they they don't want to commit to overpaying their student loans. I mean, everybody likes to be debt free. I get that. The yeah. freedom, it feels wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to when that happens for me. <laughs> but, <Same. laughs> but but the reality is, is that you still have to be able to live. So, so when you do select a payment plan, make sure it's something you can maintain. You can always pay more towards it if you have it or you, you end up getting a higher pay or paying job than what you expected. But don't commit to something too high that you can't continue with and then have to default or go through a, you know, forbearance issue. Um, you know, you don't have to, you know, get off again on the right foot. Also look into programs where they will uh, offer uh, loan forgiveness, mm -hmm. like some of the public service uh, loan forgiveness, you know, teaching in inner city schools, becoming a first responder, um, you know, depending on on where their career paths lead them. Um, and there's um, there's also, which we tell our business students, at least I know I do when my students come to me and tell me they're getting ready to interview for jobs, don't be afraid to try to negotiate some student loan repayment from your future employer. Oh, wow. Because some employers out there will offer, um, you know, hey, you know, uh, you know, whether it be $1,000, whether it be $5,000, um, and, you know, uh, military is a very good career, especially with a college degree in your back pocket, and they're happy to pay off some of your student loans, upwards of ten to 20000 I know when I got out of the Ph.D. program, um, I was offered $20,000 off the top uh, from, from one of the military branches. Um, I opted to stay civilian. <laughs> I was also a little older, <laughs> but uh, but but there are avenues to where you you know don't be afraid to negotiate part of that. And some people are are using it as part of because well, co companies are advertising. We're willing to pay upwards of five thousand dollars towards your student loan debt, and so that can be a good perk on both sides of the table for the company and for the student who's looking for that full time job. Yeah, my first. Uh job after I graduated, I was able to go into the public sector mm -hmm. and I was able to be a part of one of those programs and it actually paid off almost half of my student loans. Wonderful. So mm -hmm. that made a mm -hmm. big difference because mm -hmm. the amount that I ended up with was a lot higher than what I assumed in my head because I wasn't staying on top of things. Right. And so having half paid off, I was like, Right. This is a right. This is a great deal. So I would highly recommend uh, students who are about to graduate or looking, uh, or not necessarily one hundred percent sure about what they want to do right, right after they graduate. Right. Finding one of those opportunities, like you said, yes. can definitely be life changing. Because yes, then you'll just be buried in debt. Well, and and even some of the employers might have a stipulation that if we pay. Five thousand dollars towards your student loans. Then we we expect you to remain employed here for three years. Well, good. Put me to work for three years. Yep. I mean, so, so not only do you have you know part of your your loans paid off, you have a guaranteed job as long as you do your job well for three years. Yes, yeah. that's I mean, that which you know that that to me is a win win. <laughs> I I agree. So uh, I want to play a little game with you before okay. I let you go. Uh, so grab your little card there. <laughs> The game is called Dollars and Cents, okay. and so I'm going to read some uh, statements, mm -hmm. and if you agree with it, I want you to hold up Jag, yeah, but if you disagree, then it can be <laughs> whole and all. So, first up, investing in a meal plan for campus convenience is a more practical choice than cooking at home to save on food expenses. Mm. Now, now, <laughs> I have I have to because it can actually go either way. Okay. Um. So I'll so, so, it. so 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 let me let me explain. Um. The reason why I'm <laughs> oh no is because I cook. If you know, if one knows how to cook, or if you are open to learning, because Lord knows there, there there's some great YouTube videos yeah. out there that will teach you some basic cooking. Um, uh, you can actually uh, end up making, you know, more meals to your taste, um, and be able to do meal prep, you know, on your own, and uh, you, it, 
and save money in the long run. Um, but if you are one that does not know how to cook, does not have an interest in learning, then I would have to say maybe maybe a meal plan is right for you, uh, but maybe not necessarily the full meal plan. Maybe maybe a hybrid one mm. where where you're not necessarily paying for you know three meals a day seven days a week. Maybe it's three meals a day or two meals a day for for five days a week, where that way you can save on some expenses. Yeah, go on with. What Does that make sense? Yeah, that yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, next up, during summer break, it's more beneficial for students to focus on a part-time job for a consistent income rather than securing a full-time non-paid internship. Ooh. Yes, yeah, tough. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, ooh, okay. I, I will have <laughs> to say... Um, uh, well, I, I, I will, uh, I am, I am biased. Okay. So I will, I will admit to my bias only because we in the whole college of business, we work very hard to get our students paid internships. So, cause we understand that, that being paid and, and supplementing, you know, what income they may or may not have, mm -hmm. they need it. And, uh, often, and for some of we, now we do have some unpaid internships, but we also have been blessed to have, uh, many donors who give us, uh, who donate money for our scholarship programs. So oftentimes, if there is an unpaid internship, we're able to pay the students a stipend oh, nice. out of one of those scholarships. So um, that's one thing I would also, just an, another <laughs> another note, another tidbit, is students should apply for any and all scholarships possible. Because I know, I, I sit on um, one of the uh, on the committee at uh, for Hull for reviewing scholarships, and um, we we get so much money and sometimes we don't have enough applicants, no which is, which is kind of a nice problem to have. Um, but, but, but so students should, should just apply anywhere and everywhere because you may be the, become the recipient of one or more scholarships. And mm -hmm. a lot of times I think it's a misconception that students think, Oh, those or scholarships in general are just for freshmen or new students. And that's not oh, the case. We have scholarships that range uh, from freshmen all the way to graduate students. Um, and some of them uh, have GPA requirements. Many of them don't. They just need to be a student in a, a business student who is, um, you know, just securing a business major. Some scholarships are, are area specific, like maybe for the accounting folks or the finance folks or economics folks. But uh, but most of them are just our general business. And so we're, we're very blessed that we are able to do that. And uh, we, we, we try to, to spread the love. <laughs> I love that. Uh, next up, when choosing a credit card, mm -hmm. prioritizing credit card rewards like travel points is more advantageous than opting for cash back. Mm. Jack, yeah, hold mm. on. Um, well... You know, again, I guess the, the caveat here is, is for 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 me personally, it would be <laughs> no, uh, because I'm 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 not a big traveler. Okay. So the travel points wouldn't do me any good. Mm -hmm. Now, if there is an avid traveler out there who is traveling every opportunity they get, the if the if those rewards benefit that person. By all means, for me, I would prefer cash back on my credit cards. I do have <laughs> cash back, and what I do is I just whatever the cash back I get, I I pay the next bill with it. Yeah. So I just funnel it, and it lowers whatever I owe yeah, next exactly, month. Exactly. Yeah. So I so so it, in a sense, it it pays for itself. Mm -hmm. Last one, um, allocating funds for spring break travel experiences is more worthwhile than opting for a budget-friendly staycation? Ooh, your questions are hard. You, <laughs> nobody told me. It's not even multiple choice. Well these, are, um, well, these are just, you know, your perspective. Yeah. Not necessarily a right or wrong answer. Read that one again. So allocating <laughs> funds for spring break, travel expenses... <laughs> Experiences is more worthwhile than opting for a budget-friendly staycation. Now, I have to put myself in, in the student's position. And I would have to say, yeah, because because as a... I, I remember what it's like to be an undergrad. And I enjoyed getting out of town. I really did. And so, but I was also very... Um, 
very careful with with where I went, how I spent my money. So I, I, I could say that that basically I could spend the same at a staycation as I could away. Okay. So so, so um, n- now if, if you ask, you know, the older Wendy now, I would be like, oh, I'll just stay home. <laughs> <laughs> but the young Wendy, I did go on many uh, spring break uh, trips and vacations, and I planned for them, and I budgeted, and um, and I enjoyed myself. And I don't feel, now I can look back and say, I don't feel like I missed out on my college years. So I, th- I think, you know, hey, you, know, you need to have some fun, but budget in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, any final thoughts for financial habits for 2024 that you want our listeners to be aware of or take advantage of? Well, I, I think what's uh, what's very underutilized in this area, and you know, and there was a big push along uh, uh, a few years ago pre-COVID, you know, where all the restaurants were going farm to table. Mm. And I think a lot of students do not take advantage of some of the farmers markets around here. Uh, when I was in graduate school, uh, my mother, um, she, I got help from mom (laughs) every month and she would give me a certain amount of money for food a month. And I used to play a game. Uh, how little could I spend? And you'll be surprised at how much healthy, fresh vegetables and fruits and just food in general you can get at some of the farmer's markets and the vegetable stands in the area. You can get twice as much food for half the cost than if you go to the grocery store and get some of the processed food. And so I, my goal was always to save half of what my mother gave me. Oh, nice. And what was, what was nice is at the end of one of my uh, programs, I, I had half of what she had given me throughout the year. And I offered it back to her. And she told me, no, 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 you keep it. You did so so well, and and I ate well. You know? <laughs> so in fact, I ate better. I probably ate more healthy when I was in school than than not in school. Because when you have to watch your pennies, um, a lot of the farmers and the and the farmer stands, you'd be surprised at what wonderful produce you can get. And we have we have the local farmers markets. We have the downtown market. We have uh, all sorts of that vegetable stands that the students can take advantage of, but they they just may not be aware of them. Thank you, Dr. Wendy, for talking to us, getting me all motivated to make some better <laughs> spending uh, practices for 2024, because I know that I need to anyway. But for all those watching and listening out there, hope you have something to take away as well. So thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I love catching up with Dr. Wendy, and I'm definitely going to check my bank account or at least start checking it more often. And I'm going to try to be a little bit more active this year as well because I need it. But I hope you learned something today either way from both of these uh, segments because they are very talented and uh, just experts in their fields. And I want you to really check out Jack as well. If you're interested in intramurals, please check them out. Don't be afraid. And of course, and once again, spend your money wisely. While you're a college student, you only have a certain amount of time to make decisions that can impact you and set you up for life. And I think all that Dr. Wendy was telling us is that you have that time now to make some really good decisions. So do that. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.